So we have our hook set in our vise there, and we're just going to start that lead-free wire on here. I'm going to do about five wraps for this pattern. Always likes to spin on you. There we go. And we can break that off and push it on up into the bead. Helps to add a little bit of weight in addition to that tungsten bead that we have on there. And then we can go ahead and start our thread. Tied right behind that wire. And clipped out that excess material. So we'll build our thread ramp as usual. Right up on top of that wire, smooth everything out. And hold it all in place. And then we can work on down the bend to where we're going to start our first material here. So I always like to go a little bit way, a little bit of the ways past where the barb would be on this hook, just to give that nice elongated feel. And then we're going to use our tippet material, which will be the ribbing of our fly, some invisible ribbing. And we'll tie that in right on the side of the hook. And then we'll work back and we're going to add the cactus chanel next. So I'm using the caddis green, appropriate for the color, or for the pattern. Appropriate color for the pattern. Tie that in. I clipped off a lot of that cactusy material, that flashy material, so that I had a nice clean tie-in point here. And then we'll wrap back to where that's going to begin. Take our thread on up, cover up the rest of this material. While working on our taper, and we can jump on top of that wire and just make sure we're happy with how everything is looking so far. We can half hitch out and then wrap that material forward. So I'm going to go ahead and just touching wraps all the way forward. This material can be a little bit brittle. Those flash fibers like to come on out. So I'll usually reposition my hand rather than kind of sliding it down the material to keep it from doing that to me. We'll go up to where we want our thorax to be, which is going to be about a third of the overall length, maybe a little bit less on this fly. It's kind of a leggy region up there on the front. From there we'll do a quick dubbing loop for this ice dubbing. So, pretty small one. Get your dubbing loop tool. Create a pretty small loop up here. It's only going to be wrapped three or four times. And you can leave that hanging out for our material. Go ahead and get our bobbin out of the way. So, I'm going to pull out a little bit of this UV ice dub in black. It's a good color for this, in my opinion, because it's got a nice green hue to it. But we're going to take it and we're going to cart it between our fingers. We don't need a whole lot, but we want to just stack it up. So as you pull out of your fingers, it straightens out all those fibers and you can stack them up on top of each other. It's a small uh, strand of material to do this with, but it can be done. Once we have a fairly decent clump carded there, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the ends, square it out on both sides. Makes it a little bit easier for me to get up into this dubbing loop. You can also add a little bit of wax, it'll help hold that material in there for you. Just going to slide it up and in though. And then we're just going to kind of work it 
how we want it. So I'm going to spread it out slightly. Doesn't need to be too dense. You can always use kind of a needle for this will help. If I use my fingers, I tend to fat finger it. So I'll just kind of pull the fibers down a little bit with a needle or up or whichever way you want them to go. Ideally, you want them to be completely horizontal because then when you go to spin it, they'll spin nicely. They'll trap less of the fibers in there. But about the length of the fly probably is a good size judge for how long you want your actual brush there to be. It's a little tiny brush. So I'm going to just trim out this down to the length now. I want it to be pretty short. Just like so. You could always dub this out, but I think when you do the dubbing noodle, it really gives it that leggy appeal. So we'll go ahead and spin our dubbing tool and release it so that it spins that iced up nicely. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we got a noodle or a good, yeah, good dubbing noodle to wrap on forward. So we'll go a couple times. And the third there, secure everything in place. Capture off that thread and clip it out. And then I always like to bring in my dubbing brush and comb it all downward. Because we're going to cover up the top here with some backing material. So the more of those fibers you can kind of get to come down, the better. So the next material is going to be that scud back, the summer duck color. Lance Egan uses this color on his GTI caddis and it uh, works really well. So I translated it over to this one as in the same method. I'm going to measure out the length of our body and I'm going to go just slightly past where that first wrap of uh, nylon material is going to be and just kind of a rough guide. Going longer on this rather than shorter, airing on the longer side is a better way to go because you're going to trim that tail the back end is going to be a little bit of kind of a tail fiber when we're all done here. So secure it behind the bead, some wraps on top and a couple wraps in front and then we can trim that out. Don't pull too tight when you trim out the scud back because it's so stretchy that you can stretch it out and then it'll release under your thread. So I always tend to clip it a little long so that I can fold it back and kind of wrap clean over it here. Just like so. And then we're going to give her a half hitch and rib out the fly. Get that out of the way. So we're going to use this monofilament. Going to kind of make sure that summer duck backing is laying right on top there with our first wrap coming around. It's going to be the hardest one because everything's kind of still free. It's going to be our securing wrap. Right on the back side. And if we give it one more here, move it around and kind of snug it all in place as we wrap forward. I always kind of pull my legs forward so that as I get closer to them, I'm not trapping them. About four or five wraps right up into that thorax region. Kind of wiggle as you go through it. That'll help prevent trapping more fibers. And right up behind the bead so that we can capture it. Make sure it's nice and snug there before we clip it out.
and then we can whip finish. And go back and trim our tail to where we want that to be. So if you look at a caddis, larva, pupa, they kind of have, I think, I don't know if it's legs or what it is really. I'm not an entomologist. <laughs> but they have kind of a little something sticking off the back end. So that's what we're going to try and imitate with this material. I'm just going to kind of pull it out, clip it maybe just about the, the width of what that bead is. And then I always come in and kind of trim it to a point. Slightly. Just a small little piece of material hanging off as part of this fly. Kind of worn out those scissors. They've been great scissors over time, but I've worn them out a little bit. Get some fresh ones in here. So once we have that tail trimmed, we'll add a little bit of UV finish right on top. Come in with your dubbing brush and get those legs back down and underneath, make sure they're out of the way. And then we'll add just a small layer. Let's kind of smooth it out, create a, maybe an exoskeleton of sorts on this caddis. Move it around, make sure it's all nice and smooth on top. Even as we can get it there. Probably use thin formulas of UV finish the most. Aside from building a nice big backing bubble with thick. I really like the thin. You always flip it upside down to help get a nice smooth body on it. And then hit it with that UV light to cure. And you can see that you get that nice green pop out of this Caddis Green Mid Chanel, which is a great color. So this is an awesome fly if you fish Euro style or if you fish just standard indicator niffin, however you like to get your bugs down, this is a great option. During the summer months, when there's an abundance of caddis, work well in, in colder months as well. If there's, you know, a good caddis population in the rivers, get it down and you'll get you'll get smacked. They call it the check catnip for a reason.